Hello friends, it is Bess here from Life with Bess and welcome to the pattern tutorial for April's Pattern Club Design Orange Blossom. So the first thing we're going to do is exactly what we do every time we're going to be prepping our fabric and our hoop. So I'm using a 15 centimeter hoop and I've got my gorgeous Devonstone cotton here and I'm just going to be popping the fabric inside the hoop to get it ready for stitching. Now if you do need a more detailed tutorial on this I have a video where I go through it step by step with lots of tips and tricks on my embroidery basics playlist here on my channel but you want to get it nice and tight so that fabric makes that drum sound. This piece this is what we call an applique piece so we will be using three different colors of felt for this piece and also some hobby fill or polyester stuffing. Now it is time to transfer our design onto the fabric so I'm going to be using my preferred transfer method which is my iPad and an app called Trace Table to lock the screen and my Pilot Friction Pen and I'm just going to trace the design directly onto that underside of the fabric. I do have a more detailed tutorial on this method as well in my embroidery base playlist you will notice that the design is a little bit sparse and that is because it is a felt piece we're going to be adding more details on top and we don't actually need to transfer them directly onto the fabric once you have finished tracing your design you are all ready to start prepping your felt pieces The second pattern outline that's included in this PDF is the pattern template for the felt pieces. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure that everything is to scale. I'm just comparing it to the pot that I had transferred onto my fabric. And then you're going to trace the pattern pieces onto another piece of paper. This is the best way I found to do this just because felt is not transparent or is not translucent at all so it's really hard to do any kind of tracing with a backlight or a light box method so the best way to do it is cut out those template pieces and we're going to pop them onto the top of the felt and mark them out so you can see there's two pieces for the pot and they're going to um, layer on top of each other and then there is a template of just five different leaves now we will be cutting out a lot more than five but I just included five just to show a variety of sizes and shapes that you can do and it's a really good size guide so once you have cut out your sample leaves it's good to also double check that they aren't too large for your hoop as well when you're looking at them separately they look so small but when you put them into perspective they're the perfect size now it is time to trace that pattern template on top of the felt so I'm just holding that pattern template really nice and still on top of the felt again the pattern PDF will actually have all the details of how much felt you need and what colors to use as well and I just trace it so I have the shape of the pot on the felt and then I am going to cut that out and that will be my two felt pieces I used a friction pen for this as well just because I wanted to be able to remove any of those pen markings um, and made sure they didn't show through on the final design this this is an example of how I lined it up to trace the leaves. I tended to just use one leaf as a template and then once I got a gauge of the size I just free drawed all the rest of them just making sure every now and again to check that I wasn't getting too large or too small with my leaves. They do not need to be perfect and they do not need to be all the same as in nature. There is imperfections, there is discrepancies. So this is what it will look like and then we're going to cut all of those little leaves out. So I found a little trick to do this was to just kind of cut one side and then do like an arc around the other side and that was the best way that I could find to do it. They are very small pieces but don't worry too much about it and this is why I use that heat friction pen right. You can see that there's still pen marking on there so once you have finished cutting everything out this is what your pile should look like we definitely have more light green compared to dark green and then just go in and remove those friction pen markings just with a little bit of heat Now that all of our pieces are ready to go, it is time to start stitching. So we're gonna start by stitching the main part of the tree trunk using long and short stitch. I didn't do massive long stitches here just because I did we wanna create texture and also you can see the trunk isn't completely like even or, or parallel. I wanted there to be like some little knobs and some little bumps and some space for that little leaf to come off the side. It just creates a really nice texture and will help highlight the leaves when we add them to the top. 
Once the trunk is done, it is time to add in the stem. So I'm gonna be using stem stitch for this as well. And you can see that I've left spaces where those oranges are gonna be. You could stitch completely through them because we're gonna be adding stuff on top, but I just chose to leave gaps where the oranges would be. I love the spiral texture that stem stitch gives and the irony is not fast on me that these will be covered mostly by the leaves, but it really just helps create a structural base from which all the leaves will come from. All right, the first little bit of felt that we will be adding to this piece is the pot at the very bottom. Now we've cut out our two pieces. We're going to stitch that base piece first and then we're gonna add that top piece just to create some depth and create some really nice texture to the piece. So to do this, I am just gonna be using running stitch, particularly on that top bit where we're not gonna be seeing it. It's just to secure it in place so it doesn't move. Um, it doesn't need to be pretty because we're going to go over the top of it anyway. And then for the rest of the shape, I am just using running stitch about, about like two millimeters. They're very small stitches right on the edge just to secure it in. Once it's all there, you won't even really notice it, but just try and secure it and keep those stitches even, keep the distance even and just continue that all the way around the pot. I know in past projects I've used items like Heat and Bond to help attach my felt, but because these are such small pieces, I was just able to do it with some running stitches. Once the base of the pot is done, it is time to add that second piece on top. We're gonna to be more careful this time because this is the part you can see, and you're gonna do the running stitch trick again. I ended up doing a stitch on the right side, two stitches, and then I went to the left side and did two stitches just so that it was in place, it wasn't crooked, it was exactly where I wanted it to be and then I added those running stitches again just along all the way the outline of that shape just to hold it nice and secure and you can see that pot shape starting to take place it's got a nice texture and it will just be one of those things when you look at the piece you won't even think twice but it makes a difference that it's there Alrighty, now it is time for my favorite part of this whole piece. It is these 3D oranges. They are super groovy and I did this by using some of that polyfill stuffing just as a base. You could use padded satin stitch or even I've seen people stitch over a bead, but I really loved how these turned out with the stuffing. So you only need a very, very small amount of stuffing and you're just gonna roll it into a ball and just check the size against the outline that we have there. If you don't wanna go buy Hobby Fill or something from Spotlight, you can just crack open an old pillow and steal some of the stuffing. That will work totally fine. So we're just gonna secure it in place by just stitching an X just to make sure that it is held there. So right now we have a very, very fluffy orange, but we're gonna do lots of satin stitch to completely cover this shape. So I'm just kind of making sure that those edges are all nicely tucked in. And once it is definitely nice and secure to my piece, I'm gonna start doing satin stitch now I try and make all my satin stitches go in the same direction but can vary between orange to orange that just creates some different texture and just draws your eye to different areas it does take a lot of thread I'm using all six strands of thread here but just take your time just kind of shift those threads so that they are covering all of that hobby fill and if you need to you might have to do a stitch halfway through just to kind of hold it in place but then just do the trick of blending with your needle just so it looks like it's just all continuous satin stitch in that same direction and that is how you do a 3d orange you're just going to do all of the oranges in the piece they can you can see how all of mine are going different directions i really like that effect it is a very cool stump working technique and i cannot wait to try it in more pieces in the future once you've finished the orange you can just mush it to the shape that you want the first lot of leaves that we are going to attach to the design are the dark leaves. This just means that it'll create some depth and some shading to the piece. So I'm just using a single strand of a matching green color and I'm just going to do some backstitch up the center of the leaf, only about halfway or a third of the way. That just means that leaf can actually lift off the hoop and get that nice 3D effect. You can see the leaves that are right up against the oranges. I have actually cut just that 
that tip off so it can sit nice and flush to that orange shape. I have a guide where all of the leaves are meant to go and what shade they're meant to be, the light and the dark, all in the PDF pattern for this design, just to make it nice and easy and you're not trying to look at my design and replicate that. We want it to look like a real tree, so we're gonna have some of the oranges being hidden behind the leaves, so we want those leaves to be angled up so they're kind of covering the oranges at different angles. It is a little bit of a fiddly process between twirling the felt and attaching it, but it is actually a lot quicker than normal embroidery, so you'll find this piece will come together quite quickly once you have gotten to this stage. Keep adding those leaves. Don't worry too much if they start to cover those little orange blossom flowers that we've drawn onto the fabric. We'll be adding them in at the very end. So there are all the dark green leaves added. It's time to add the light. It's time now for those light green leaves to be added. You can see I've removed the pen markings and we're gonna be doing exactly the same. There will be a few more leaves that actually will be the full size. We won't be cutting as many of these, but you're gonna do exactly the same thing, just adding two or three back stitches up the center to create that kind of pinch down onto the fabric look and then leave the ends completely free so you can see how those ends of the felt leaves start to kick up off the fabric. We're gonna be doing a lot of overlap a lot of layering because you really don't want to see much of the fabric beneath that orange tree we want it to be nice and full super fluffy so I'm just going through and adding in my leaves here and there you can see I've added that little baby leaf onto the stem as well I really love how that just tied it in through the the design and you have to move some of the felt pieces around and tuck it in amongst and just yeah have fun with it just experiments take a look back and see if there are any gaps anywhere that i need to fill and then before you know it you'll be at this stage it's really coming together and i loved how this effect turned out the final little detail that we're going to add are these little orange blossom flowers that will be peeking in through all of those leaves. So we're just going to be using straight stitch and just do like a five tipped star. Nothing super fancy, but it is enough to really shine through everything that's happening. You can see here for this flower, I'm actually stitching over the top of a leaf, but then some of them it's kind of half behind, half in front. So just really get a gauge of what you think it needs for the space, whether it's hidden or whether you can see it. Now that all of the stitching is finished, you may notice a little bit of felt fuzz on the fabric. So just grab some double-sided or rolled up tape and just dab all of that felt fuzz away. And now it is time to remove the pen marking. So I'm using my trusty hair straightener to do this. There's the beauty of the friction pens. It just makes this step so quick and easy. And then you are done. Just fluff up those leaves to create that nice 3D effect and back the hoop as you choose. I hope you guys found this video really helpful if you have any questions just let me know in the comments you can buy this pdf pattern on our website it is our orange blast of design and if you're interested in pattern club our monthly pattern subscription which this pattern was a part of you can also check that out on our website as well thanks so much for joining me and happy stitching